Well, uh, today uh, uh, we're going to discuss in this video uh, uh, and a series of three videos, uh, the perspective of a producer uh, in the short run. In the short run means when and some of the uh, factors of production are fixed. Uh, at least one of the factors is production in the short run. Uh, so the objective is that uh, we, uh, so far what we discuss in different topics uh, is from uh, consumer's perspective. Now we're gonna shift our uh, discussion towards the producer's perspective. Uh, you know, when we do business, uh, what is our objective, how we can achieve that objective. So these are the things we're gonna cover uh, when we are talking from the producer's perspective. So let's start with this uh, producer's <laughs> uh, production in the short run. So let's <clears throat> share with you the screen. So as uh, uh, you know, it's uh, from producers uh, uh, perspective uh, and how is going to producers behave in a short run. Uh, when we are defining short run in economics, we, we say that at least one of the factors of production is constant or it's not changing. All other factors can be changed. Now, the first question asks, what are firms and how we define that business? Uh, what different uh, uh, way of organizing our business? So uh, one of the way of doing business, which is the primitive and which is the very oldest way of doing business is a single proprietorship. Means a single owner running a small business uh, with uh, mostly with, the, uh, with his or her skill set uh, he is running or selling and the products which uh, in which he has some expertise. Uh, a limited size business can be operated under a single proprietorship or a single ownership. Uh, then uh, the other way that uh, is called as a partnership. Partnership can be uh, uh, two or more. Uh, not less than two, because uh, if it is one, then it is not a partnership. So partnership, at least two uh, people join together to do a business. Uh, so partnerships are again of a two types. One is we call it as an ordinary partnership uh, in which both partners are working uh, for the business and they are responsible for the business. Uh, in that case, if there is any liability arise for the business, uh, so both are personally responsible or liable uh, for the liabilities of the business. Uh, we observed in, in our uh, uh, economy that uh, businesses like uh, uh, consultancy, accounting consultancy, law consultancy, uh, medical consultancy uh, is operated under this uh, uh, model like a uh, few doctors join together to make a clinic and the, they are the partners. Uh, same, same is the case with an accounting. So some accountants join together and make a accounting firm and lawyers join together and make a law firm. So that's the way that, that uh, it works. Uh, in other forms of businesses also as well, it can work, but mostly we see that the professional join together. Uh, there's a, another category of a partnership uh, in which we call that as a uh, limited partnership in which uh, some partners are operating the business and some are silent partners. Uh, they are also considered as sleeping partners because they are not operating. Uh, in that case, they, they become the member with a limited liability. So they said, okay, uh, but it is not possible that all the members of a partnership can be of a limited liability. Few, mem few partners can become a members with a limited liability. Uh, corporation, uh, this is the most uh, common way of doing business in North America, as well as in, in uh, all the modern worlds, uh, which we call it as a corporations, in which uh, thousands or even millions of people contribute money as a, a certificate of ownership, like a stocks or a, a shares. Uh, they become the owners and they pool their money to run a big organization and they hire the people, which we call it as a professional managers. They run the business. And ultimately, whatever the profit the firm earn, so the owner, the owner, which is the owner of the uh, stocks or a, a share certificates, uh, they get uh, returns in in the shape of either they can get a dividend or I, they can get it in return in the shape of increasing the value of their stocks. So this is the way that. 
Then uh, there is also some firms we, we see here uh, in Canada or in North America, uh, state-owned enterprises, like uh, especially in Canada, we see that uh, many organizations are owned by the government and they are registered uh, as a crown corporation. So uh, many uh, medical facilities, many schools, and uh, these type of organizations are uh, state-owned enterprises, like uh, transportation companies or uh, uh, BC ferries, like these type of organizations are crown corporations. Uh, Non-profit organizations, there are certain organizations which established with an objective that their objective is not to make profit. Although they can make profit, but their objective is not. They are, their objective is to serve a certain community, to serve a certain uh, class of people. Uh, that's uh, like a Red Cross, like some uh, uh, religious organizations uh, doing the uh, the, these type of things as a non-profit. Some, uh, uh, some schools and some hospitals are also run through uh, non-profit organizations. So these are the things uh, or any, uh, if you analyze any business, um, uh, that business is going to be uh, having a one or one out of all these four forms of organization, how to organize them. Uh, there are some firms who are operating not only one country, but in different continents, in different countries. Those uh, firms are called as MNEs, uh, multinational enterprises. Uh, 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 so definitely uh, those organizations have one headquarter and we consider the firm belongs to that country where the headquarter is, uh, although they operate in different regions with their different uh, regional offices or uh, operational uh, wings uh, in different countries. So uh, that's what we call it as a multinational, a multinational enterprises. Uh, <clears throat> now, when we start business, uh, definitely we need a uh, capital and we call uh, there are two types of capital. One is a financial capital. The other one is a physical capital. We need financial capital to pay uh, wages, to buy raw material, to do these all these activities. Uh, and this one, we call it as a financial capital. We also need financial capital to buy a physical capital, like a factory, like a machines, like a tools, like equipments. All these things, what we have to buy is called as a physical building, land. Uh, so these are the physical capital. So we need financial capital in order to buy a physical capital or in order to run the business, like wages, salaries, taxes, and all these things, we have to pay raw, buy raw material and all these things. So how do we arrange the financial capital for a business? So there are two ways. One is, is that the owners contribute towards this financial capital. And when the owners are contributing, that is what we call it as an equity. And the other way is that we can borrow. Now, if we borrow, that is a debt. So there's only two things that we can uh, use to arrange the financial capital for a business. Either we can invest our own money or the owner's money. That's what we call it as an equity, or we can borrow. Now, the, there are different ways of borrowing, but we will discuss in the next way that how it's going to operate. So equity, uh, individual proprietorship, like if it is a single business, a single ownership business, then it's an you know, individual proprietorship that the person is investing. If it is a partnership, so partners are contributing in it. If it is a corporation, then how they, so that those who are buying the shares, they are contributing towards the financial capital. So that's a, a way that uh, stocks and shares uh, create an equity. Uh, and that's why we call it as an ownership certificate. So there's talk, stocks and shares are ownership certificates. So, and what, how they get returned. And I just mentioned that they get returns in the shape of a dividend. Like where, whenever the for, uh, corporation earns a profit, they distribute that profit uh, to the uh, shareholders or the stockholders. And that's what we call it as an uh, equity holders get their returns. On the other hand, there's a debt. Debt can be that you can borrow uh, from uh, so uh, the the one who lend money is not the owner. So it's we all know that very well that when you borrow money, so you are not uh, you are not considering that uh, the person is the owner of the asset. So you buy an asset by borrowing money. So you consider that this is your liability. This is your asset. Uh, the the other person is only the lender. So that's are not owners and loan with a loan agreement or 
as commonly we call it as IOU. So firms can borrow from financial institutions, from friends, uh, friends, family members, and all. So the financing can be possible from any way uh, in the shape of debt. Uh, they also borrow from the public, how they borrow from the public. Indirectly, they borrow from the public through financial institutions or non-financial institutions. Uh, the, uh, directly, they borrow money by selling bonds. So when they sell bonds or when, whenever we borrow, uh, for, for a debt, uh, the, the borrower has a live uh, responsibility not to pay the interest on it, but also to repay the original amount. In case of an equity, uh, the business is not responsible to pay back the equity. So normally there is a secondary market in which the shareholders or stockholders can sell their stocks and shares, uh, but uh, the, the firms are not uh, paying back because that's a uh, we consider this as a pe perpetually operating. So that's the a way that uh, they are not uh, returning the uh, equity. Uh, yes, dividend they're gonna distribute. So, but again, the dividend is not non-obligatory, but interest is an obligatory. So, these are the differences between debt and equity. So, we all know that uh, the firms, especially all the uh, different uh, categories of organization we discuss, only the last one, which is non-profit organization, all other firms we create. The objective is to make profit. To make profit. So we generally uh, make assumption about firms' behavior. Our firms are assumed to be profit maximizer, and each firm is assumed to be a single, consistent decision-making unit. So we we think that whenever the firms are making decision, they are making decision uh, uh, with a uh, with this uh, consistency, like a rational people or a rational person uh, or a rational behavior. And it is going to be considered whatever the how big the corporation is, but when we, they are making the CN, we consider it as a single decision maker unit of a, a corporation. So based on these assumptions, economists can predict the behavior of the firms in uh, various situations. Now the, there are two views uh, which are uh, uh, against uh, each other or uh, competing views. Uh, so unadorned capitalism goal of profit maximization does not serve the broader public interest. We agree that if there is a only objective open to make profit, it's going to be sometimes hurt the public, like uh, in case of an environment, in case of a public goods, in case of a common land. So these are the things that's going to be not taking care if there is a profit is the only motive. And that's why we need some uh, intervention from the government to make certain rules and regulations and laws or bylaws in order to motivate or to in order to uh, curtail the behavior or uh, tame the behavior of the firms uh, towards a, a public interest. So uh, profit maximizing benefit customers and their employees and lead to innovation, which improves living standards. Uh, yes, we know that uh, if there's a profit maximization motive, that's why the firms are competing with each other. That's why the firms are uh, investing money in research and development and innovate new products. The only reason behind that is that they innovate new products, they get a copyright or a patent for that, and then they can make money out of it. So objective, uh, Profit making is not a bad objective uh, the, it, that gives the public uh, new products, new things, innovations, and uh, uh, getting a better and better, and that's going to improve their standard of living. Like in case of a, uh, COVID, we see that within a sh very sh short period of time, uh, a vaccine was developed uh, and roll out uh, throughout the world in order to uh, get rid of this COVID. Uh, now, why these uh, Pfizer, Moderna, and all these firms uh, uh, invested millions of dollars to discover or to uh, invent the vaccine? Uh, because they made billions of out of it. So the profit maximization is good in the sense because they know that if they discover uh, a vaccine for, against the uh, COVID, so they can make billions. So that's the reason uh, profit maximizing is also benefiting the uh, society. Uh, but in certain circumstances, like here mentioned, like environment, uh, and public goods, uh, and uh, uh, in some areas, uh, the private or uh, the uh, profit maximizing firms are not taking care of it. So 
in that case there is a need of a government intervention or a government uh, role to play to motivate or to divert or to direct the behavior of the uh, firms so the uh, the remaining portion of this uh, topic we're going to cover in 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 video 2 and 3